What up, everybody? Kevin Hart here. I hope that we have all been safe through this pandemic. I'll tell you what I do miss, the set of Coldest Balls. I want to welcome you to Coldest Balls, Cold Calls, presented by Old Spice. Clue number one, was drafted in both the MLB and NFL drafts. Uh, okay, easy. Deion, Deion Sanders, for sure. It is absolutely not Deion Sanders. He's the shortest quarterback to win a Super Bowl. Did I win a Super Bowl? <laughs> I didn't win a Super Bowl. Has played his whole career with the same team. Joe Montana. Joe Montana. Has appeared on the cover of the Wheaties box. Oh, Jesse Lyman. Let's bring him on in. It's gotta be Jesse Lyman. What up, Cam? Russell. It took you that Wilson. long. I should have had that, Russell. And I should remove that Eagles helmet behind you right there. First of all, Russell, that is an authentic one of one Eagles helmet that was worn by one of the best punters to ever play the game. First of all, Joe Montana, he played on different teams, man. What, okay, what is your problem? Are you here to pick a fight with me? I win the fight. Why are you coming in so hot? Joe Montana, he, he played on different teams, man. What is your deal, man. <laughs> we just starting a cold call off, for God's sakes. I'm ready for the cold call. First things first, what have yeah. you been doing to, to stay active, uh, keep your mind clear through these two and a half months, almost three months? It's nice. been crazy, man. You know, C's pregnant, so that's the first thing. We've been going to uh, these, these these doctor's appointments, and I can't even go in the room sometimes just because of the whole process, so that's been that's been interesting, but you know, just been training. You know what I mean? You know what I love? I'm looking to train with you. I'm waiting for you to come be my slot receiver. The day that you do that, it'd be the day that you add more Super Bowls to you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, dude. How many months is she? She's uh, eight, eight months now. So. Okay, so you're in front. You're you're in front of me then. Nico's about six. So, you know, we, we, we get real snappy over here. I say, I'm sick of you using this baby as an excuse. <laughs> <laughs> she told me early on, she was two months pregnant, right? And, you know, I'm trying to, it's Friday night, it's date night. We're trying to, you know, trying to, you know, come home the right way. You sure? Yes, yeah. And so anyways, I'm getting all dressed up, ready, prepared, you know, everything else. She says, hey, uh, I'm going to wear my Uggs. You know? <laughs> and then she says, my feet hurt. So I wanted to finish the night strong. So I said, you know what? I'm going to rub your feet for the rest of the night. Well, when I tell my wife, I go, I'm a dime. At the <laughs> end of the day, you got a dime piece. Okay? And that's what I tell her. So maybe I need to change it up a little bit, get a little more romantic, because that's what you I'm You need to change it up. You need to change it up. I'm going to put a hidden camera in your house. I want to see you and Steph Curry angry. I'm willing to bet it's some sh to see. Oh, we get hey, hot. We get hot. You strike me as this guy. I said, go and do it. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> um, time to pay some bills. This episode of Cold Calls has been brought to you by Old Spice Sea Spray Antiperspirant Deodorant. That's right. Sea spray. Get you some. I got mine. Thanks, Russ. <laughs> Let's get into sports, man. One of the most amazing things about you is that you had the choice to play baseball or play football. Let's talk about the decision to play football over baseball. And the reality is, is that it was also one of the hardest decisions I had to make. I was an All-American in, in baseball, so out of high school, I got, I got calls in the late first second, and beginning of the second round. I turned it down. I, I wanted $1.5 million or I wasn't going to go. So I got offered like $1.1, and I, I still turned it down. So my thought was... If it's meant for me, it's gonna come back to me. Mm -hmm. No need to make a rush decision on it. And so I end up going to NC State, playing two sports and all that. As soon as I get to NC State, though, my dad gets sick. And so he gets sick, he has diabetes, he has to get his leg amputated. And that was a tough time for me in my life, spiritually, emotionally. And honestly, that made me become a man. Okay. I got drafted June 8th, 2010. The next day, my dad, my dad passes away June 9th, 2010. So the highest of the high to the lowest of the low, just like that. Just like and that. And that was... That was heavy on me because I, I had to take control of my own career, my own life, my own destiny, and make the decisions that I needed to make. Uh, I had to make a decision, am I going to play football or baseball? And I ended up saying, you know, I'm going to transfer to Wisconsin, do that. And right after Wisconsin, I ended up getting drafted April 27th by the Se Seahawks, and the rest was history. That's something I... Roxy, if I tell you again, I'm in... Please! I'm interviewing Russell Wilson. I don't have time to play with you right now. Sorry, <laughs> Russ. It's all good. You know I played in the church football league. When I played in that league, that's when I was really putting up numbers. But everybody kept saying he's too short. He's not going to make it. So yeah. I can only imagine what it would feel like for you because you're a smaller guy. So as a smaller man than I am, how did that? Hold on. Rewind that real fast. Because I know what it did to me. 
to hear that. I'm going to have to palm that head of yours. Damn it. Bam, bam. Why are you here? Bam, bam. I'm having a conversation. That's great. That, that's supposed to be my head. You palm my head and you threw it to the side. Bam, bam. That's original. Bam, bam. Do me a favor. Do me a favor. Go f- yourself. Okay? Get out. That, the, the way we do these cold calls, they feel like they're left out because they're not able to be next to me. So they try to pop in. And it's not funny. It's not funny and it's not original. And it's quite disturbing. Um, let's get back to greatness. Talking about you being a small quarterback, chip on your shoulder. Was it or was it not? Oh, for sure. I, I have one memory distinctly of when this happened. So we go to the combine. It, it can't have nothing. I mean, just draws. That's it. No, no, nothing. That's it. And I was going to try to put some socks under these feet yeah. and try to get, you know, a couple extra inches. I had my hair, I had my hair all tall and I had it all gelled up. And I'm thinking to myself, man, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be, I'm going to be good six foot, six one with this hair, you know, this hair long, go long. And sure enough, I know I've, I measure myself my true height. I'm like five, ten, seven and some extra. And so anyways, sure enough, this dude measured me a five, ten and a quarter. I'm like, he turned around, you just right. see this. I was hot. Is when I'm walking down, I'm walking down the aisle, right? And everybody's like, psh, 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 and I'll never forget this. There was a dude on the right, I ain't gonna say who it is. He said to the guy next to him, he said, psh, he'll never make it. He, he's, he'll never make it. Wow. I'll never forget hearing that in my right ear. I don't think there's anything more fulfilling than proving <laughs> your personal greatness for you to you. When I went to the combine, I think I ran, I ran a 3-9. In the 40s, and this is when everybody was blowing out. They kept saying that I had jet fuel in my sneakers. How tall are you really, though? In about 5'2? You say like my actual, actual height? Your actual real height, about 5'2, right? I think it's like 5'4, maybe? 5'3? Five, five, I was thinking a little bit lower than that, but somewhere in that. Summertime, I lose like a half a quarter or something. Winter, I go up. Whatever. It's not about my height, Russell. Let's focus on the matter at hand. Let's talk about football now. You're the little guy in the NFL coming into the Seahawks. Um, were you a guaranteed starter? No, I was a third string quarterback coming into the uh, training camp. So wow. I, had to, I had to work my, my tail off, man. What was the moment when you said starting job is mine? You know, I got into the third preseason game and... We just we just scored that game. We made some sweet plays, and the next day, Coach Carroll called me, called me outside. He was shooting hoops. He loves basketball. He thinks he's Steve Kerr. He, uh, <laughs> he called me outside. He said, "Hey, listen, I want to talk to you." I'm like, "What's up?" He says, "You're going to be our, our new franchise quarterback." Wow. And uh, I just started thinking about my dad. I started thinking about all the stuff I've been through in my life, all the hard work, and it all came real. It all came to fruition. Wow. Yeah. Ever since I was young, I always kind of wrote out what was going to happen. I always wrote out my goals. And that gives me direction. You know, Daryl and Bam Bam, this is what your should have been in here listening to. That You want to you wanna palm a god head, Bam Bam, but you don't want to listen to this. Daryl, you want to sit up here and tap in and play your games all the time. What do you have to say about that? Bam Bam. Bam Bam. Bam, get off my head. Bam, stop, stop playing, man. Stop. I'm trying to talk to you about life. Bam, bam. Let him go, man. That's funny to you? Get your ass out. <laughs> All right, Russ. Let's go back to the Super Bowl. Let's go back to the infamous play where the world questioned. We, we go, we, can we go back to the first Super Bowl? No. Okay, all right. No, all right. we can't go back to the first Super Bowl. That's the, that's the easy conversation. Um, after a moment like this, what was your... Locker room stance. That was a heavy time, man. You don't really don't really know what to say. We knew we could go win the Super Bowl. We knew we were gonna go win it. All that kind of changed in that moment. And and I remember going on my walk to the media and having to go down there and I was like, what am I gonna say? I don't even know. Like, you know, for me, everybody deals with things differently. And I know for me, I wasn't gonna let that define my career. I was gonna do everything I could to, you know, come back stronger and come back. And to be honest with you, the next year was was one of the toughest years, to be honest with you, because you, you had to deal with all the scrutiny, all the tough pain, and, and everything that you that you dream for and hope for is not always going to work the way that you want it to or, or foresee it to work. In a perfect world, how many years you have left to play? Yeah, for me, I, I think I can go, you know, 13 to 15. Great number. Um, so, dude, we're, we're in our 
homes. Is there a keepsake that you can show me? Memorabilia? Um, it's, it's in my gym right now, memorabilia. Well, then you can say no, Kev, not here. Well, let me show you what I have. That's an MVP trophy of mine. I'll make sure I keep it right there so that as we do this, you can always see it. But I have up higher, I can't tilt this up from the uh, the Christian leagues that I played in. My Super Bowl ring's somewhere over there, too, but I don't know tomato, what that tomato. is. It's tomato, tomato. Tomato, tomato. We don't need to compare the two. They're, I think they're of the same, you know? Yeah. I know that you're hosting ESPYs. And, uh, you know, look, they've never given a celebrity game award or, like, the GOAT of celebrity games. Yeah, they got no category for you and comedians and, and short, short comedians. I'm not throwing it out there. I'm just saying... If you want to make it a thing, we can make it a thing. Couple stipulations though. The first one though is um, taking that helmet and making sure that is gone next time we talk. When people say birds and they go a seahawk or an eagle, which one do people gravitate towards? The eagle. Seahawks are some of the stupidest birds alive. Everybody knows that. Remember that story I told you when I was walking down the aisle? You one of those folks. That's what I'm I hear now. I'm gonna have you on my shoulder right here. <laughs> so Kev, I know you. I know you pride yourself on all these sports stats, and I know you got that ugly Eagles helmet right behind you over there. That's hurting my heart. But listen, let's see if you know any stats about me. What position do I play in baseball, Kev? Easy outfielder. No. Second base. Second base. That's what I was going to say. You writing that down? That's, that's the first one's wrong. Yeah, second base. Thank you, fellas. Hey, man. You and Dad, I told you I'll stop with the notes, man. There are no, there is no tub. There are no consequences. So, Kev, tell me what my middle name is. Thor. <laughs> Thorntine. Thorntine gets relatively close. Yes. Carrington is the middle name. Carrington. You have a very established name. So, what rapper, Kev, used my name in a song? Easy. Vanilla Ice. No, relatively close. Eminem. Eminem. Ain't this about a b I knew it was Eminem. Dude, I'm saying in advance, congrats, man, to UNC. I mean, we got to get the kids together. We got we to gotta all kick it soon. Hey, let me know when you want to. I'll just drop mine off at your house and I'll pull off. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this has been another episode of Cold Calls with myself and Russell Wilson. I hope you're as blown away as I am. That's what Cold Calls is about. Burr.